Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming out and welcome to the 2024 State of the City Address. Um, before we get started, as we often do with official city business, we need to take a roll of our city council members that are here today. So uh, I'd like to take a moment to, to thank our city council members and recognize them uh, for their service to our city and to our community. Uh, those folks are David Branco, Sarah Cole, Alex Jensen, Rich McCurris, Greg Neitzer, Marshall Selberg, Kurt Sale, and Pat Starr. Please give those counselors a round of applause. I also believe we have several of our counselors elect here. Uh, Miranda Basie, I saw was here. Uh, is Miranda here? Uh, Ryan Spellerberg is here. Uh, and our third counselor elect, Sagetti, Jennifer. It's not on my teleprompter, so I'm going off memory. Jennifer, is she here? Thank you, Jennifer. All right, thanks for being here and for the effort and energy you provide in your roles uh, to help guide our city. Special thank you to uh, counselors Alex Jensen, Greg Neitzert, uh, Marshall Selberg, and Pat Starr, who will be finishing their terms of service this, this May. Two more meetings uh, for those guys, so we thank them for their service. Uh, as we do with most of our meetings, we're honored to be able to start with an invocation. And I reached out to a friend of mine and uh, a community leader, Rabbi Mendel Aperovitz, uh, to lead our invocation this morning. So, Rabbi, I'd like to invite you up to the stage for our opening invocation. A song of ascent. I raise my eyes to the mountains. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to falter. Your guardian will not slumber. Behold, the guardian of Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your guardian. The Lord is your shadow. He is by your right hand. The sun will not smite you by day, nor the moon at night. The Lord will guard you from all evil. He will guard your soul. The Lord will guard your going and your coming from now into eternity. Next week, Jewish people in Sioux Falls and around the world will be celebrating Passover, recalling how God took us out of Egypt to bring us to the Holy Land of Israel almost three and a half thousand years ago. Indeed, the right of the Jewish people to live freely in the Holy Land comes from God, who created the entire universe and decided to gift the land of Israel to the descendants of Abraham and his son Isaac. The Bible, held sacred by billions of people around the world, is the deed and the contract, and it will never be broken. And yet, as we read during the Passover Seder service, in each generation they rise to destroy us, but you, God, protect us. Almighty God, we ask that you bless the city of Sioux Falls its citizens, council members, elected leaders, school teachers, emergency responders, police officers, business owners, mentors, and our mayor and his family, with good health, happiness, and prosperity. In the words of the prophet Jeremiah, we pray for the welfare of the city, for in its peace we will have peace. And we pray that Sioux Falls continue to be a beacon of light, hope, and moral clarity during these turbulent times, times that may be best described by the words of Isaiah. They say of evil that it is good, and of good that it is evil. They present darkness as light, and light as darkness. Tomorrow marks the 122nd year since the birth of the Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem Schneerson, whose teachings inspired me to serve in Sioux Falls, and taught us all to be ambassadors for good for all humanity by increasing in acts of goodness and kindness, charity, and moral education. It is the Rebbe's teachings that still give me hope for a better tomorrow. 
So even though we have lived through terrible times, I still believe, and I want you to believe with me, the world is not doomed to war and fighting, to hate. Humanity was not created to kill out each other. Humanity was not only created to send rockets up to the sky, but humanity was created to bring a little bit of heaven down to earth. King David tells us, if I forget you, O Jerusalem, forget my right side. So today as well, let us pray for peace and for the welfare of Jerusalem. In the words of the psalmist, may those who love you enjoy tranquility. And as God said to Abraham, I will bless those that bless you. God bless you all. God bless the people in the Holy Land of Israel. God bless our great city of Sioux Falls, and may God bless America. All right, thank you, Rabbi Aperovitz. Uh, now I would ask that you rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance with me, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Additionally, I want to welcome members of Senator Thune, Senator Rounds, and Representative Johnson's offices. Thanks for being here. Uh, we have state legislative leaders here. We have county commissioners, various community leaders, and obviously our esteemed residents of Sioux Falls. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, thank you to my wife, Jill, and my normally three kids have two this morning. Nora's battling a headache at home, so... Uh, they're up front here. Thanks for coming here today. Uh, their support as I enter my sixth year in this job uh, has been incredible. It's been an incredible blessing. So I love you guys. Special thank you to the over 1,700 full-time and part-time city employees who serve this growing community, many who are here with us this morning. Your contributions and commitment to this around-the-clock work inspires my own service daily. So thank you for that. It's both an honor and a privilege to be standing before you reflecting on our city's journey over the past year and envisioning the opportunities that are ahead of us. As we transition from the unprecedented growth of the last several years and our continued focus on strategic planning and financial stewardship, we anticipate another significant year ahead for Sioux Falls. We are in the midst of incredible investments that are being made in this community. This will be a fun morning for us to celebrate a few of these major investments. Investments made possible through the bold vision and commitment of remarkable partners across our city, both public and private, alongside our elected leaders. They're like pieces of a puzzle slowly coming together over time, defining what Sioux Falls is and can be and shaping how the world views this community. This progress will continue to draw people here to live, to work, to raise a family, and to stay and play for generations to follow. So today I want to begin by reflecting on and celebrating the milestone anniversaries of two community assets and recognize the vision that it took decades ago to make these dreams a reality here in Sioux Falls. It was in October of 1993 that voters approved by a very slim margin, 51 to 49 percent actually, Sioux Falls moving ahead with a $33 million bond providing funding for the construction of a new convention center and renovation of the former Washington High School into what is now the Washington Pavilion. The rest is history, and it's history still in the making. When the approval of the bomb was announced on Election Day back in 1993, Dan Kirby, who was a founding Washington Pavilion Board of Trustee member at the time and a champion for the project, said this, the future called tonight and Sioux Falls answered. And what a great line that is, the future called and Sioux Falls answered. Remember that 
as we keep talking here this morning. Six years later, the door to the Washington Pavilion was opened, and as we know it, it first opened to the public in June 1 of 1999. Millions have visited since, bringing with them energy and economic impact that is really hard to fully define. I couldn't be more excited today in being asked to announce and unveil that in celebration of the 25th anniversary of the pavilion, a new privately funded outdoor art installation will be added on the pavilion grounds later this year. This continued contribution to the cultural vibrancy and economic vitality of our growing community is indicative of the value this visionary investment has had on Sioux Falls. Please help me in recognizing the team from the Pavilion who are here with us today along with other Washington Pavilion board members on this exciting announcement. Another landmark in Sioux Falls that's celebrating a major milestone this year is the 10th anniversary of our Denny Sanford Premier Center. The Premier Center truly has become a destination for families and friends to connect and take in unique experiences. And our community continues to reap the benefit of the investment voters made in funding this facility. The Premier Center and the Convention Center reported $19 million in revenue in 2023 nearly 2.4 million more than the previous record year in 2022. And these aren't just buildings to our community, they're investments in our community's economic vitality and overall well-being. I really can't imagine a Sioux Falls without the Premier Center or the Washington Pavilion, and neither can many of the individuals and families that now call Sioux Falls home. Over the past five years, we've added a population to Sioux Falls that's equivalent to that of Aberdeen, the third largest city in our state. In response, our teams have worked hard to meet the demands of growth while maintaining some of the lowest utility rates and development costs in the region. Making this community investment friendly, both for businesses and for our residents. Utilities and transportation infrastructure, they are the foundation of city growth. Development and growth, in fact, it really can't happen without utilities. Wastewater, water, energy. Development and growth also can occur without a safe and reliable transportation network to support it. Caring for our utility and transportation networks is the cornerstone of our city's vision statement, which is taking care of today for a better tomorrow. And our team in the Public Works Department provides world-class system care to these assets, triaging the problems of today and making investments to establish our future growth potential. We recently passed the halfway point on the expansion of the water reclamation plant. This project expands the treatment capacity of the plant by 50%, taking it from 21 million gallons per day to 30 million gallons per day. And I've been told that we might get to finish the project before my time in office is up. Is that right, Cotter? Where are you? Okay, you heard it. In addition to wastewater, we are investing in building well 25 which we anticipate will be the largest water-producing groundwater well for the city. In addition, we're also actively supporting the next phase of the Lewis and Clark Regional Water System, and we are an active member of Dakota Mainstem, which is a collaborative of water utilities and other stakeholders across Southeast South Dakota, working to secure water security and capacity for this region for the next 100 years. In addition to utilities, we focus on street construction projects that preserve, rehabilitate, reconstruct, and expand our community's transportation network, including 
vehicle, but also pedestrian and bicycle routes. South Veterans Parkway is a transformational investment aimed at developing the southeast area of Sioux Falls and connecting it with the rest of the city and region. This critical corridor is designed not only for vehicles, but other modes of transport as well, like biking and walking. This 8.6 mile project is underway now and is quickly reshaping our community. This year, we're also set to welcome the first diverging diamond interchange at 41st Street and I-29. Diverging diamonds are used across the country and are proven to enhance traffic safety and flow. With this innovative design, we will be able to support increased traffic capacity at the state's busiest interchange as we continue to grow. The diverging diamond design will be introduced at two additional projects in future years, including Benson Road and Interstate 29, and, 5th and 85th Street and Interstate 29. Another bold investment that has literally been years in the making is the, transfer, is the transformation of our public transportation system. Late last year, the city awarded its management contract for public transportation to a company called VIA. Since our partnership with VIA began on January 1 of this year, we have seen ridership increase across the system and by 25% on microtransit specifically compared to the same time last year. More than 80% of total rides this year to date were booked using a new VIA app called SAM Transit. Just last week, VIA in the city announced expansion of the SAM On Demand weekday service to more than 40,000 residents in Southeast Sioux Falls. This is exciting as we continue to work on modernizing the system. It will help our residents and visitors get to where they need to go throughout the day. Accessible, user-friendly, and affordable microtransit is what people have come to expect, and it's what we're working diligently with our partners at VIA to provide. Throughout my tenure as mayor, our team has also focused on some of the most fundamental aspects of our community's well-being, and that is housing. Housing stability is not just a matter of having a place to live. Housing is the foundation upon which individuals and families build their futures. Over the past year, our city has made significant strides in this area, and I'm proud to share with you a few accomplishments and some of our future plans. In 2023 alone, the city of Sioux Falls was able to expend $5.4 million and directly impact nearly 3,000 individuals through our housing programs and partnerships. These efforts are a testament to our commitment to strengthening access to safe and affordable housing. Among our most significant achievement last year was the continued partnership with Interlakes Community Action Partnership, also known as ICAP, for the Bright Futures Program. This initiative targets at-risk of homelessness families, primarily single mothers, providing them with crucial support. Utilizing our federal funding, we were able to offer education, case management services, and rental assistance to 75 families, impacting the lives of 240 individuals. I'm pleased to share that this is an annual program, reaffirming our ongoing dedication to supporting vulnerable families in this community. Looking ahead to 2024, there are several exciting developments on the horizon. We anticipate the relocation of families from the Bishop Dudley facility downtown to the Community Commons building formerly occupied by Children's Inn. This transition, which is expected early this summer, will provide these families with improved housing options. The city also this month announced the hiring of our first homelessness services coordinator, Michelle Treasure. 
Michelle will breathe new life and focus into collaborating with our partners that are doing such great work in our city and coordinating data collection that can help identify solutions to the challenges of this very hard, yet very, very important work. These are initiatives the city is involved in or helping to lead. There are so many more individuals, organizations, and businesses working diligently to offer a hand up, as well as hope, to families in need where housing is concerned. And we want to recognize just a few of those people this morning. Jeff Nelson is a longtime Sioux Falls realtor with 605 Real Estate. And he has dedicated decades of his career to helping families find affordable housing. Jeff has served on multiple boards, including the Sioux Empire Housing Partnership, the Homeless Advisory Board, and most recently, our Accessible Housing Advisory Board. In fact, he's been the chair of that board since its inception in 2019. And while Jeff's advocacy and work in the incredible housing arena is commendable, he has shared that this simply is what you do when you're a citizen of a community and a state. You get involved and you see where you can give back. Jeff is with us here this morning. Please join me in thanking Jeff for the work he continues to do. We also want to introduce you to a couple this morning who have been advocates for children's, children and families. Charlie and Carol Childerston both had long careers in the Sioux Falls School District. Charlie's actually still the announcer for the basketball and football games at Sioux Falls Lincoln, where he once taught. Retirement, though, just wasn't fulfilling for the two of them unless they were doing something meaningful. So when Carol got a call from a friend in 2003 to help a few hours each week in the office at the Furniture Mission, which provides people in need with gently used furniture and household items, she agreed. Before long, she was managing the office and Charlie was in the back refurbishing the furniture that would come in through donations. 21 years later, both still volunteer several days a week and when asked why they do this, Carol said this, it's helped a lot of people that have nothing. Our whole purpose is to help give them a jump start. And a lot of these people we help, we never see again. And that's the point. So thank you both for sharing your time and talents with our community. Please share with me a heartfelt round of applause for Charlie and Carol who are here. I want to take a moment and express my gratitude to our dedicated housing team, our partners, and the entire community for the partnering spirit they act upon daily. Together, we are making tangible progress toward our vision of taking care of today for a better tomorrow. By investing in housing stability in the lives of our neighbors, we're not only building stronger neighborhoods, but also ensuring a brighter future for all the residents of this community. This bright future, though, it's also reliant upon community leaders who are willing to serve one another. In my time as mayor, I've had overwhelming gratitude for the steadfast support our community has shown for our public safety team members. Yet, despite this support, as I stand here today, we are 22 officers down from operating at full strength. I remain committed to investing in our public safety teams and enhancing our recruitment efforts so that our Sioux Falls Police Department, Sioux Falls Fire Rescue, and Metro 911 teams remain fully equipped to serve as the backbone of our city, tirelessly working to keep us safe day and night. And as an aside, we had 911 outage last night, and I saw this team go into action, and it was incredible. And much of the community woke up this morning not even realizing that we were without 911 service for over two hours last night. And they scrambled and they did an incredible job. So off script, give those guys a round of applause for what they did last night.
Just last year, we celebrated a significant milestone with the opening of the new public safety campus. This cutting edge facility operates as a statement of resiliency, providing our public safety women and men with modern state-of-the-art training facilities. Now these facilities are not just buildings. They are investments in the future of Sioux Falls. They equip our dedicated public servants with the tools and the resources they need to excel, ensuring they're prepared to serve our city today and tomorrow. And in case you're wondering, I still have not got a ride on that EVOC course. <laughs> our commitment to public safety, though, it goes beyond infrastructure. It extends to the very structure and governance of our Metro 911 services. Last year, we worked closely alongside our Minnehaha County partners to reconstruct the governance of this agency. This collaborative effort moved Metro's dedicated employees into the City of Sioux Falls public safety team, where they are now officially recognized as full-time City of Sioux Falls employees. With a new home at the public safety campus and within the city's public safety team, Metro has the resources and support to serve our growing community and region well into the future. To the incredible individuals of our Sioux Falls Police Department, Sioux Falls Fire Rescue, and Metro 911, and I know you guys hate doing this, but I'm gonna ask you to stand and please be recognized. Your dedication, your sacrifice, and your commitment to this community does not go unnoticed, and we're grateful. Another way in which we are working to enhance the quality of life for residents of Sioux Falls is through investments to our parks and recreation system. For the past two years, you've heard me speak about Jacobson Plaza, largely because of the positive and incredible impact I know that this truly unique, family-friendly regional park will have on Sioux Falls. After two years of planning and preparation, Jacobson Plaza is scheduled to partially open later this year with a dog park, a spacious, inclusive, and accessible playground, and the city's largest and most unique splash pad. This project will be fully completed in early 2025 with the opening of the region's first refrigerated ice skating ribbon. I am so excited for the community connections and memories that will be created through this investment. It's a great example of community assets that provide both memories and education with each visit. An example of that is the Great Plains Zoo, Butterfly House, and Aquarium. Leaders Becky DeWitts and Audrey Otto Pepper just unveiled a 15-year, $150 million master plan. This plan is the result of years of research, planning, and dreaming big about improvements that will transform the 45-acre campus into a regional destination. Plans for phase one include the construction of a world-class aquarium, which will feature a full shark tank, a jellyfish gallery, coral, and more, and a raised walkway to better view all of what's inside. The full master plan additionally calls for new spaces on the zoo campus, including the new splash pad that is set to open this summer, wider walkways and viewing area improvements, updates to each of the animal habitats, and expanded rehab space for animals that will be reintroduced back into the wild, and importantly, the ability to generate revenue and a sustainable business model. The changes are expected to nearly double the number of visitors to the zoo each year, and the goal is to begin construction of the first phase in 2026. Like so many other long-term major investments being made in this community, this too is coming together thanks to the bold vision and philanthropic contributions of community leaders. And with summer just around the corner, it's probably fitting that we talk about pools. 
at McKenna Park, the end of this summer season will bring with it the start of construction on a new wading pool that will offer more spray features, a larger deck, shade areas, and a new support building with public restrooms and year-round gathering space. The old pool, built in 1971, it's been well-loved and heavily used, uh, and it's at the end of its life expectancy. While it can be tough to say goodbye to an old friend, neighbors are eager for the chance to have a larger and more user-friendly space to cool off through the summer months. Neighborhoods around Frank Olson Park on the east side of Sioux Falls and Keene Park on the west side, they're pretty optimistic as well. They have been working with the city's parks department to envision the replacement of the city's two oldest public pool facilities with new modern spaces and more year-round indoor access. City leaders in the coming month will be asked to fund up to a $77 million aquatics and recreation bond to support these efforts. It would be the largest parks and recreation investment in our city's history. Plans at Frank Olson Park, they're generating considerable excitement and anticipation within the community as they call for a new indoor aquatics and recreation facility. Neighborhood feedback indicated strong support for an indoor facility, providing space for recreation, swimming, exercise, indoor play for kids, and community gathering year-round. On the west side, the Keene Park neighborhood indicated strong support for both an outdoor pool as well as indoor recreation opportunities. This was no surprise to our team as we have heard that feedback across the community for years on the need for more indoor recreation space in this community. With so much discussion happening on that need, it wasn't surprising that leadership at Sanford Health approached us and proposed selling their West Side Indoor Wellness Center to the city of Sioux Falls for public use. Just yesterday, we held an announcement alongside Sanford leadership and shared that this $77 million bond will include the purchase of the Sanford Wellness Center located just off of T. Ellis Road. As Sanford shifts its focus towards a more medical-based care model across the region, the sale of this facility, coupled with their commitment to assisting us in meeting the growth demands of our community, allows for investments in indoor recreation on both the west and the east sides of Sioux Falls. I want to take a moment and recognize the community spirit of our leaders at Sanford Health for this. Time and time again, they, along with so many other partners, they step forward to help meet the growth demands of our community. And their offer for the public to acquire this existing wellness center, far below the appraised value, by the way, is no different. While the property appraised for more than the proposed purchase price, we were advised by their leadership team that they were willing to discount the property as a sign of their support on the bold vision we cast in creating even more future access to indoor recreation space and a new convention center space in the future. And we'll talk about that in a couple minutes. This is the unique partnering spirit that continues to build Sioux Falls and move it forward. If anyone from Sanford is in the audience, I want to take a moment and recognize your leadership and thank you for your commitment to this community with this proposed transaction. Thank you. While financially significant and critical to our future growth, these commitments represent a pivotal moment in enhancing the health and vitality of our community, elevating our quality of life here in Sioux Falls. Our team is thrilled at the prospect of working closely with our city council to move these projects forward and positively impact the entire city. For the population of our community today, Best practices suggest we should have roughly 320,000 square feet of public indoor recreation space to meet the needs of our community, not counting indoor aquatics. 
Currently, we have about 20,000 square feet. So given the overwhelming need for indoor rec space, we shared earlier this spring, right here in this building, a bold vision for Sioux Falls carrying us into the year 2050. So 2050 is almost 25 years from now. So just as we're celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Washington Pavilion and the 10th anniversary of the Premier Center today, 25 years from now, we could be celebrating the transformation and milestone anniversary of this facility we're in today from convention center space to indoor recreation and entertainment space. I want you to take a moment to look at the ceilings in this room. Now imagine no walls in this entire place. And instead of meetings like this, you're coming here with your kids, your grandkids, your spouse to play pickleball, use a climbing wall, play on basketball courts, walking track, turf soccer fields, and indoor play spaces. Centrally located, this space, when repurposed, could not only transform our community's health, but also our physical and mental wellness. Additionally, 25 years from now, we could be sharing the state of the city address from the Riverline Center downtown, a new modern and appropriately sized convention center in downtown at the Riverline District. Positioned on the east side of downtown and along a critical transportation corridor, this potential future investment, when realized, will undoubtedly become an anchor for community events, exhibitions, conferences, and conventions. Imagine the Sioux Falls spirit that would be captured and celebrated in that future State of the City address. We envision the Riverline Center investment serving as a catalyst for urban revitalization, spurring further development and investment in the surrounding areas. Such a dynamic addition to Sioux Falls' vibrant downtown skyline would enhance our reputation as a destination for both leisure and for business. Visions like this, they take time to become a reality. And while the Friends of the Riverline District Committee have been meeting for several years, there remains a lot of work to do to bring this vision to life. An important next step includes completion of a feasibility and economic impact study that will be likely finalized this summer. Additionally, later this year, in our budgeting process, we'll be working with our city council to make an important decision on funding the purchase of the land for this bold community vision. While we cast bold vision, we also maintain a steady hand on the challenges that are right in front of us. Time and time again, Sioux Falls moves forward because a group of visionary community leaders, they push for something bigger, bolder, and lasting that will impact our community far beyond any of our lifetimes. This isn't for us. This vision is for what Sioux Falls will someday be for our kids and for our grandkids. The pandemic, it threw a very bright spotlight on what a great place South Dakota is to live, the incredible job opportunities here, and the beautiful quality of life that comes along with all of it. As a result, the cost of living has increased to a point that it's had noticeable impact on families, individuals, and community resources. As we look toward the future, it's imperative that we continue to approach our growth with wisdom, with foresight, with caution, but also with optimism. We're confident in our team's capacity to navigate and oversee our unprecedented growth that we're experiencing. But we are also mindful of the uncertainties ahead, including an effort that you may not even realize is underway to appeal the tax on all consumable goods. Some are saying that if approved, this ballot measure could lead to a future statewide income tax. If this ballot measure is approved in the upcoming fall election, our community would see a substantial reduction in sales tax revenue that would profoundly impact the services we can deliver to the public. So what might sound like a good plan and a win for the average person or family to have to pay a few cents less on consumables depending on how it would be structured, could instead lead to decreased funding 
for essential services like street repair, snow removal, parks and rec programming, and staffing for our public safety team members. So in the face of such uncertainty, we need to be prudent in our fiscal decisions. We need to hold the line while continuing to provide high quality services, ensuring that every dollar that we are entrusted with is spent wisely and every plan is meticulously crafted. That's how we will be approaching this budget year ahead. Yet in the midst of some of this caution, we continue to dream big. The Riverline Project, the unveiling of Jacobson Plaza, the prospects for additional development across Sioux Falls, the ambitious new zoo master plan. They all stand as testaments to our unwavering commitment to progress, even in the face of challenges. As we look ahead, I would urge you to resist the temptation to succumb to the negativity and the cynicism that often pervade political discourse. There's so much good happening here in Sioux Falls. So many reasons to be hopeful. So many reasons to believe in our collective future. As we move to close today, I want to do something I don't believe has been done before, but I feel it might be a great way to remind ourselves of the vision we are casting today for future generations. A senior at Washington High School, Siane Retta, is one of my mayor's youth council members, and I've asked her to come share a few words about this city that we are building together. So, Siane, you want to come on up? Please welcome her to the stage. Good morning to you all today. My name is Siane Retta, and it is an honor to be with you here today. I'm a member of the Mayor's Youth Council now for two years, and in that time, I've had the opportunity to learn quite a bit about this city, the changes happening to it, the opportunities being made available, and some of the thoughts going into planning for growth years down the road. While I prepare later this year to move to a new city, Cambridge, Massachusetts, to continue my education, I'm grateful for the opportunity to continue to call Sioux Falls my home, no matter what it will forever be. I was born here and have been raised here by my parents, who have immigrated from Ethiopia to the United States and Sioux Falls in 1999. They chose this beautiful city of ours at that time because we had other family living here. We've moved to different areas of the city over the years, but my parents and our family have stayed here because we love it here. It feels safe here. There is an incredible quality of life here. We love the parks, the pools, the downtown, the art scene, the events, investments being made, not just in the heart of the city, but throughout the city. I love our schools and the programs they offer and the opportunity to continually meet wonderful, new, and genuine people. Sioux Falls is an incredible place to grow up. My hope for you, Sioux Falls, while I look for growth in my own life, is that you maintain that strong sense of who you are, that tight-knit, supportive community as you grow too. In 20 years, I still wanted to have the feel that it does today, like we have a say. I did go and vote this past week, and I was only 25th in the middle of the day, and that's not a lot of people. I want people to be more aware of how they can impact this place through voting, going to council meetings, and by getting involved anywhere. Even though we're growing bigger, the community is here to serve every single person, which you can't say of all communities. I love this place. It's small in comparison to some other cities, but that's not a bad thing because you don't feel like you're a small fish in a big pond. Instead, you can still feel like you have a voice and can make a difference. Be a mentor and a connector where you can, explore new neighborhoods, meet new people, see people that don't feel seen, help translate for someone still needing to learn the language, and learn about each other and the opportunities here, and live life the best you can. I love Sioux Falls because of the open-mindedness and consideration the people have here for each other and how welcoming they are. Our differences and stories allow us all to learn from one another and become better as individuals and as a community. Even things like improving the city's walkability, adding more bike lanes, and giving people encouragement to leave one part of town and explore another can bridge gaps for families and create space for future generations. Sioux Falls may be smaller than some cities, but therein lies its strength. 
Everyone has a role to play in shaping our collective destiny. Thank you, Sioux Falls and Mayor Ted Haken, for the opportunities and the foundation you have given me. Thank you. That could be future Mayor Retta right there, actually. She's going to Harvard for neuroscience. Is that right, Tiane? Is it neuroscience? Yeah. Yeah, she can go places. Yeah. If you have time after, there's six or seven Mayor's Youth Council kids here this morning. Feel free to stop and say, say hi to them. As we embark uh, on the final leg of this journey together, my wish is to see our community engaged and united. And as Siani just mentioned, we recently held citywide election for city offices. And we had 7% of the registered voters exercise their right to vote. That means in this room today, about 15 people showed up to vote. Well, think about that. The things we're talking about today, uh, they don't happen by accident. They don't just happen. They take smart leaders. They take people who can build consensus. They take people willing to elect the right people to move these visions forward. So I hope you'll vote in our upcoming runoff election on April 30, and in all future local city elections. They really matter. We must continue to look at getting involved in our community, not just being a consumer of the services, but a participant. And the best way to participate is by getting involved in local elections and local office. You know, they say the price of an opinion is participation. So if you want to have an opinion in our, your city, you must participate. We've got a great thing going here in Sioux Falls, friends, but the future is calling. As Dan Kirby said, the future is calling. How are we going to answer it? So let's continue to dream big, to invest boldly, and build a future that we can all be proud of. So thank you for joining me today, and may God bless Sioux Falls in the year ahead. Thank you all. Thank you.